All right, welcome to episode 23. And if you remember in the previous episode, I assembled a CPU and glue logic PCB for the 6809 computer system, and there were a bunch of problems with it. The power connections were reversed. There were missing connections to the backplane signals for some of the chip selects that are needed for the core peripherals. And another issue was that some of the pull-up resistors were too close to the corner of the PCB, meaning that they might obstruct the mounting clip that I am planning to use for the card cage. So our agenda for this video is very straightforward. I have a new fixed version of the PCB that's this that hopefully addresses those issues. So I will assemble and test it and hopefully it will work. Okay, let's find out. All right, so just to refresh your memory, this was the original version of the CPU and glue logic module and the problems were the power connections to the backplane here and I did a really ugly bodge that involved cutting some pins in the backplane connector. So definitely we want to address that. The location of these pull-up resistors is a little too close to the corner of the board where we're going to have a plastic mounting clip to help secure the card in the card cage eventually. So I wanted to move those a little bit and there were some missing chip select signals that I was able to fix by adding actual bodge wires to the back of the PCB. So the new version should hopefully address those problems. I've reoriented these pull-up resistors. I hopefully have fixed the power connections. I'm going to actually test that before I start populating components. And I also hopefully did route all of the chip select signals. So, all right, I think I'm going to do a little bit of minimal continuity testing of the connections just to make sure that the ones I changed are now correct. Uh, I think I may just sort of YOLO the rest of the assembly and assume that everything that was right on the original board continues to be right on the modified board. So famous last words, but let's see if that plan works out. All right, so according to the backplane connector diagram on the schematic, basically the two pins that are all the way to the right are the ground and VCC, the power connections. And according to my diagram, the one in the bottom row should be ground and the one in the top row should be VCC. So this should be the ground pin, this should be VCC, and we should be able to easily verify that those are connected correctly by testing for continuity with the footprints for the logic trips. All right, so this should be ground, so that's always in the lower right corner. All right, that looks great. And then this pin should be VCC, so that's always the upper left corner on logic chips. So that looks great as well. Okay, so I, I think I am going to assume that the power connections are good. I guess I should also check to see that the orientation of this decoupling capacitor is good. So, okay, this should be ground, so that should be the negative side. That looks good. VCC is the positive side, also good. All right, so now let's check these pull-up resistors. So basically these pull the interrupt input lines on the CPU high unless they are actively being driven low by a device generating an interrupt. So this side of the pull-up should be connected to VCC, so we should be able to verify that easily. Okay, so that looks good. And then these are connected to pins four, three, and two on the CPU respectively. So pin four, pin three, pin two. All right, so these look good as well. All right, so the last thing I need to check is that these five chip select signals that weren't routed on the original version of the board are being routed properly, and I've marked them uh, with these pieces of tape here. So this is the uh, IODEV 0 signal. That looks good. Uh, IODEV 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, that's great. And they should continue. All right, so I am going to assume that the chip selects are now working correctly. All right, at this point, I think this is ready to put some components on. So I will solder this off camera and then I will come back and we can test to see if it actually works. All right, so I have soldered some of the passive components on, but before I do the IC sockets, which are kind of expensive if you use the good ones, I'm going to plug this into the back plane and I am just going to verify with the multimeter that we are getting power delivered correctly to the board. So let's see. So I know that this ZIF socket is wired correctly. Okay, so that's getting five volts. All right, so now I'm going to probe a logic chip and that is indeed getting five volts and not negative five volts. So that does imply that the power connections to this board are good. Okay, I think I'm gonna do the IC sockets now and then we can plug stuff in and see if it works. 
All right, so here is the fully populated board with the IC socket. So essentially I just need to put the ICs on it now and then we will be ready to test. All right, so here is the board fully populated with ICs. One thing I will note is that this resistor network that serves as pull-up resistors for the data bus is not installed. And so you may recall the last time I tried the original version of this CPU and GlueLogic module, I had those resistors installed and the system did not work with them. The original version of this board, the hand-wired one, did not have any pull-ups on the data bus and the system works fine. So I'm gonna leave them off for now. Probably should investigate that at some point. But in any case, I think we are now now ready to test this. All right, here we are for the moment of truth. I have the backplane set up with the new CPU and GlueLogic module, and then the existing modules, keyboard controller, interrupt controller, ROM, RAM, and peripherals. Currently, I'm just connecting via USB to the USB to serial converter so that I can use the QtComm program on my PC to communicate with the ROM monitor. And basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to power the system on. All right, so excellent sign. We see the prompt for the ROM monitor. So let's type some commands. So let's go to address 9000 hex, and then let's just dump 32 bytes of memory. So this is basically the machine code for the beginning of the ROM monitor. This all looks like it's working exactly as before. So that's great. I think this is now completely working, the CPU and Blue Logic module. And excitingly, this is basically done. I don't think I'm going to be making any more changes to this module. All right, so let's conclude and see what we're going to do next. All right, so this project was one of those rare projects where you try something and it just kind of works. So that was great. The CPU and glue logic module is completely working at this point. So what's going to happen next? So I actually have PCBs for two more modules, the memory and peripherals module, which is actually improved over the original hand-wired version because it will support, hopefully, RS-232 serial. And there's also a PCB for a combined interrupt and keyboard controller. So I will actually show you the PCBs briefly. So here is the interrupt and keyboard controller module, just a bunch of chips. Here is the memory and peripherals module. I'm actually planning to allow a ZIF socket to be installed directly on the board, which should avoid the need to wire it onto the backplane. So that's coming up. I am also planning to develop an interface to allow the host system to communicate with the display controller. So the display controller obviously is in a pretty early stage, but I do want to move forward with that. All right, so thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.